Hi there. So I teach operating systems and other systems classes at Clemson University, and I find that I get a lot of the same questions and I'm giving a lot of the same advice over and over again. And so I've decided to put some of that advice into some videos that hopefully will capture that and make it available for students who aren't in my classes and maybe don't come to office hours, but just to, to make more available some of this advice. So these these videos, some will be more technical than others, some will be more focused on tips and tricks, some will be very specific to C and Linux, which is what I use in my classes, but hopefully the principles that I go over will generalize to other languages and other operating systems. For this first video, I, wanted, I want to talk about three mistakes that I see students make all the time and that, that I hope will help you become, become a better programmer, a better student. So, so one of those mistakes, the first mistake, is that they procrastinate. So I hear people all the time say that they work better under pressure. I have yet to see a student programmer who truly is smarter and does a better job programming when they're up against a deadline. Smart students start early, and they have a more relaxed time. They produce better code. It's just smart. The second thing that I see students do often is that they do not automate repetitive processes. So this includes your build system, this includes your, uh, your testing, all of these things students, I, they're so focused on what they're learning in class that they forget that they're programmers. And programmers automate things and it causes them to make a lot of silly mistakes. There are a lot of mistakes that are made just because people are doing things manually over and over again that could be handled in a make file, that could be handled in automated tests. And this is just, it's just a silly mistake that causes a lot of problems. Okay, so the third that I want to talk about is that they don't use a debugger. Instead, they use printf to do their debugging. Now this, I know printf was the first I.O. technique you ever learned. It was in that, that first Hello World program and you love it so much. But if you debug with printf, it's time to stop. Printf is not a debugger. It is not a debugging tool. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So if we take a look over here at this program. So we have a program here. <clears throat> it compiles just fine. So you can see I have a very simple make file I created for it called buggy.c. There are a whole bunch of things that are wrong with this program. Please don't uh, scrutinize it too closely, but, but it compiles just fine. Right? It compiles with no errors. That's great. Uh, when I run it, it seg faults. So every student that I've ever had that's worked in C see seg faults. I'm not going to go into detail in this video about what seg faults are and how they work, but I do want to just talk about this particular seg fault as an example. So if you look at the code, the question is where is the bug? Right, where is the bug? And you know, this is a simple enough program that an experienced programmer will look at this immediately and say, oh, I know why this is why this is failing. But for now, let's assume it's more complicated and let's say that it's not obvious to you. One tactic that a lot of a lot of students take is they start uh, sprinkling their code with uh, so they start sprinkling their code with printf statements. So they'll say things like so we'll put this here. So we, we have two of these statements, and the idea is that hopefully when I run it, I will see where I got, and I'll see if I got to number one, number two, and we'll see where it's where the segmentation fault is happening. So let's see what happens. Now if, if a student were to take this approach, one of the things that happens all the time is that they might, they might try this and they go, oh no. The seg fault occurred, it didn't print any of my statements. And this is the point where students start to, well, they, they might start to cry, 
They might get really frustrated. They might start saying things about magic or you know, bugs in the operating system or their, their machine is possessed because they're, they're saying it's crashing before it ever gets to main because the first thing I'm doing is a printf. In truth, that's not what's happening. But let's see what happens if we use a debugger. OK, so I'm going to use GDB. You want to make sure, if you look in your make file, you're going to want to make sure that you use, if you're using GDB, that you compile with debug symbols included, so dash G in this case. OK, so, so now if I say, if I, if I load this in GDB, um, yeah, it all started up, and I run it, well, so, OK, so it runs till it seg faults. It hits the segmentation fault. Now, initially, this may not look helpful because it tells me it, well, it is helpful. It tells me it, it seg faults in, uh, in string copy. I can use this, the backtrace command to look at uh, how we got there. And it says it crashed at buggy.c at line 17. So right here, line 17, this string copy, that is where we're running into trouble. OK? I can go up the stack using the up command. And I can look at things like, well, so I, I know that there's a problem with one of my one of my pointers, right? That's that's how seg faults work. And so I can look at I can look at buffer. Buffer looks okay. I can look at RV1, which is the other one, and oh, that's null. So I'm trying to copy from a null pointer to uh, into this buffer, OK, all of a sudden my seg fault makes sense. Now, I found that very quickly. Rather than with printf, I, I was hunting around. Now, why did printf not actually, why did these things not print? Why did it not show up? Uh, this is <clears throat> probably a more complicated topic that I want to go into. But the short answer is that it uses, printf uses buffered IO. And if I had added a slash n, or if I had added a specific uh, f flush command to actually flush the buffer, then it would have shown up. The point is, is that debugging with printf is fragile. So it's, it, it requires us to um, make sure that we handle the buffers properly. The other thing is that when you use printf as a debugging tool, now once I'm done, I have all these nonsense printouts in my code that I'm going to have to either comment out or I'm going to have to delete them. And you know, while I'm deleting them, I might accidentally delete something else. It's just, it's just a poor way to program and a poor way to debug. So there's your tip. Uh, you know, use a debugger. Debugger is much more powerful. It allows you to work on your code without modifying the code, which is great. And it's, it's a much safer way and a good preparation for when you're doing this, when you're doing this out in the workforce. OK, so that's all for this video. So just remember the three things. Start early. Don't procrastinate. Make sure you automate repetitive tasks. Trust me, it's worth it. And number three, use a debugger for a more relaxed time as a student programmer and better preparation for the workforce. All right, thanks. Hope this was useful. Have a good day.